rejection and abandonment and a feeling of a loss for what we didn't have from our parents. And then there are others of us who have great parents who are doing all that they can for us, but we just refuse to follow direction. Right? Come on. And I would like to believe that most people in this room fall into one of those categories. And so when Morgan was telling me what the topic for the event was, women's empowerment, I thought about that. Right? I, I worked for an agency whose mission was empowering women. And so what that looked like, how we walked it out, was different than how I hear it used. I hear it just, I, I, I just feel like it's overused sometimes. Like, Come on. Uh, it's empowering women. We empower women. Empower, everything is empowerment. Empowerment, right? And so in order to give the word the real weight and the meat that it really deserves, I wanted to just to take a minute to look at what the word meant. And so the word empower means to give power, right? And when you're giving power to someone and that person becomes empowered, then they are able to give power. Come on. Right? And so when I look at a women's empowerment event from the perspective of a woman who's getting ready to start a new program that will empower a new generation of women who have some broken places and they need a place to stay to be whole, I looked at it and I thought, well, what does that mean for that person? So a little bit about me, I, I grew up, I had my father, my grandfather, my grandmother. I grew up in a household, broken home, my mom didn't live with us. And so I grew up with it at my mom, right? Thinking that had she been there some kind of way, my life would have been different. Now, I don't know that. I don't have any way of, of uh, I, I can't find a metric on that, that just because <laughs> my mom was there, my life would have been that much more rare, right? But I do know this. I do know that my grandparents were hardworking people, and my grandparents instilled morals in me. My grandparents instilled a work ethic in me. They were tough, but they instilled that stuff in me. But I, because of what I felt I did not have from my mother, chose to break the rules. I chose to look outside of my home to be accepted. I chose to look for things in the street to be a part of. So I was, for all intents and purposes, by the age of 13, very well, maybe one of the young ladies who would have ended up in your program. Come on. <laughs>
to benefit me because they knew that those wasn't my drugs. They knew that that wasn't my handgun. They had been watching the crew who was selling all the drugs for months. And I was just some young, foolish little girl trying to be a part of, trying to be down, who got caught up. So they went in and intentionally made themselves look like fools so that I could win that case. And after I beat the case and I came out of court, they began talking to me. And they began trying to give me some words of wisdom, right? So that I could make a better decision to empower myself to make a better decision the next time. But I didn't do that. Because right? <laughs> by this time, I was in the streets. And so after years of substance abuse and years of going in and out of incarceration, I did time in the state penitentiary. I did two years up there when I was 24 years old. I got out when I was around about to turn 27, right? I had four children by this time. So what that meant for my children was that they were being bounced around in and out of foster care, in and out of homes for people who had the heart for children who had been displaced. And one of the things that I realized when I finally decided to get clean that all the way along the way, all the way, there have been women who had always mentored me in one aspect or another. Mm. So whether it was in my recovery program and they called themselves sponsoring me, um, they, they poured into me and tried to give me information so that I, would, I could stay clean and I could walk the right path and I could really get my life together. So I want to give you a couple of definitions that I, I really feel is, is really relevant. So, mentorship and the different forms that it takes. So for me, like I was saying, the recovery sponsorship, recovery sponsorship is a relationship within a program, 12-step program, where one experienced person, that's the active word, experienced person in recovery offers guidance, support, and accountability to the new member. The purpose is to promote accountability, provide personal guidance, and facilitate sustained recovery through shared experiences. Professional mentorship is a supportive relationship between an experienced professional and a mentee in the same or similar field. The mentor shares knowledge and insight and advice to help the mentee develop skills, make career decisions, and achieve personal and professional growth. That's the relationship that Norma and Shonda have. Mm -hmm. An internship is a temporary position that provides practical experience in a professional setting, often related to a student's recent graduate field of study. The purpose is to offer hands-on experience, are we getting the picture here? Yeah. Hands-on experience, provide exposure to industry practices and professional networks. And all those things, they all have in common is there's somebody who has experience in some aspect that is providing experience, skill, wisdom, and understanding in another aspect to a person who is open and willing to receive that information. Come on, open, come on. Open. Come on. Open and, open and willing, right? And so here we find ourselves in the Norma Jean Johnson and many other <laughs> young ladies in this room that they know they want something better, they just don't know how to get there. Right. But us in the room that have more wisdom, experience, and knowledge of how to live life and how to walk out life, it is important that we be able to take somebody under our wing and show them what 
Amen. Mm. I was out this morning Come on. and made more money at a job than people with master's degrees. I don't talk about what I do. I be about what I do. Come on, come on. I don't talk about it. I be about it. I do the work. And that's what you did. You did the work. Right? Because I don't have to announce on the top of the hill that I just did this and I just did that and I sit on this board and I sit on this coalition and coalition and that I'm actually sitting on the places where God put me that I'm, 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 I'm shaping the policy for the people who have the same illness that I have. Right? And they need people in whatever perspective of uh, uh, social service or or Today, that young lady is a registered nurse. She's been in her, but she ain't young no more. 
I still think I'm a little, a little whip and stab, but I'm not. I am officially an old head, right? <laughs> Tell me, how do you do that? What is 
all the time. And when it comes to my business, it's never about me. That's right. Never. Right? And so it's important. It's important that I learn how to thread the needle. Right? It's important that I learn that listen, whatever your skill set, it may not be my skill set. It may not be my skill set. Listen, when I, when I married my husband, I told him, I said, listen, I'll never, I'll never win the Martha Stewart of the Year Award. <laughs> I'll bake. Like my clean skills are high. <laughs> like I ain't no man. Me and my baby eat on my horse. and connectedness and I'm always going to 
be here with you. And guess what? You both quietly, and when you blow, 